This is a quick guide to getting started using Pebble for your own experiments. So Pebble is the psychology experiment building language and it's a cross-platform software system for running experiments. I'm going to be running it on Linux, but um, the launcher looks the same if you run it on Windows or Mac OS X. So I'm just going to start it with a little shortcut I have here. And it'll start <coughs> um, in your uh, documents pebble exp 0.14 directory. Um, so this assumes you've already done the install and it will have copied these things to your documents pebble exp 14 directory. And it won't um, overwrite the stuff that's in a different in any of your other directories that you may have had past versions of pebble. Uh, so if you haven't seen um, the new version of Pebble, there's a lot of uh, new sort of both UI improvements and a lot of things to help your workflow for running experiments. So I want to go through each of these. Um, the first and most important thing is the navigator window. That's this thing over here which lets you navigate through different parts, um, your file system where different experiments are saved. So if you want to do your own experiment, you might save it in here and it would appear here. But now, say within this battery subdirectory, there's a bunch of different experiments. I can navigate and launch them through here. So the way this works is the first time you click, it will select <coughs> and show you a preview of what it will look like along with some information about the test. And if I click it again, it will open that up and let me run it. And in order to run something, you have to select a .pbl file. If you want to go back up a directory, you hit the dot dot, and I go back to the main uh, battery directory. So here I'm in the battery subdirectory, and um, I can scroll through here and look at different tests and see, give basic information about them. But I need to open up this subdirectory to actually run it. And so, so many of these have multiple tests within the subdirectory, like this scales, which has four or five different tests. And so in order to find out which tests are in there, you really have to open it up and look through them. So there's basic information here. There's a screenshot, and if you want even more detailed information, uh, for many of the tests, you hit this wiki button and it will take you to a web page that will help describe the tests in more detail. So <clears throat> let's say you want to run a test. And let's pick um, the time wall. So here's a sort of time estimation task. And <clears throat> the first thing is um, all the tests can, are run with a participant code that's set within the launcher. So this number or character string or whatever will be passed to the test and the test files will be saved with that name. And each data log, each row of data that's logged will be logged with that name to help you keep track of it so you can pool everything together. Um, you can also specify <coughs> subject codes and screen sizes. It will default to the current screen size, but you can specify other ones. Um, and, there are, and then there's also parameters you can set. Um, we'll go into that later. But basically, to run a test, you select the PBL file and you hit run select test. Um, the first time you, when you're testing it out, you should probably make sure the full screen button is off um, just to make sure everything works out fine. So here are the instructions. And this thing is moving along and I have to hit a button when I think it's you can hit that little gap at the bottom. There we go. And here I was 9.29 seconds for 9.66. I was a little early. Here we go again. There we go. Um, I was a little long, so I want to quit this right now. And because it's not full screen, I could hit the close window. But if it were full screen, I can use the secret um, uh, keyboard combination, which is Control Shift Alt Backslash. <clears throat> All right, so that's the data. Um, now things oftentimes get printed out by the by the script and afterwards they get um, copied into this little window and if you're debugging your own script this can be really helpful to figure out what went wrong when 
and nothing went wrong in this case, so we uh, won't do anything. But you also, um, if there was an error, if there was an error in your syntax, it would have showed up in this window. So at the bottom of this window, there would have been something that said, um, something like this, an error near line. Here, because I gave that up keyboard combo, it says that's where the break happened, and that's where it exited. So now, if you uh, <coughs> want to run an experiment, um, you'll notice that that thing I just ran had participant code 2, but now it's automatically uh, incremented to participant code 3. So this makes it handy that you can set it to, say, whatever number you want, and every time you run something, it'll get incremented so that you don't have to worry about um, uh, accidentally using the wrong number. It'll always pick a higher one. Uh, at the same time, the different tests all check to make sure that you don't reuse subject codes, and if they do, they ask you about it and, and will ask if you want to append to the previous subject or um, create a new, you know, choose a new data uh, subject code. <clears throat> um, but let's say that you have research ex um, assistants who are running your studies and you want to make sure they do the right thing every time. I can create sort of a saved state that gets run every time. And so I do that by creating a, an experiment chain. And the default chain is going to be saved in this default.config file. And I can just select a PBL file and hit insert, and it'll get listed here. And if I now save this chain, and I were to quit and run again, that, that still is the first thing in the chain, even though I'm not in that um, directory anymore. So if you, you can set this up for um, even a single study, and then to launch this chain, which just has a single study in it, I'll hit this launch chain button instead. And now I get the same instructions. And go. All right. Now, the handy thing about the chain is that we've got a lot of tests here. And a lot of people like to um, run multiple tests to see if they correlate with one another or see if they have any relationships. Um, and so you can put multiple tests together in a chain. So let's say I also want to run, um, well, let's do a very short one. We we'll use one of these scales. Uh, I'm having a little trouble because of the screencast software. And I want to use the handedness scale, and I want to add that to this. So I'm going to uh, insert it. We'll put it before the selected point, and append will put it at the end. So I'm going to hit insert. So now we'll say first do the um, handedness scale, and then the time wall. So I'll hit save chain just to make sure it saves it. And now when I launch chain, it will first do this handedness, and I can make sure I answer each of these. Done. And then it will take me directly to this time wall study again. We'll do a couple trials here. Okay. All right. So that's... Um, how you use the chain. I can actually randomize this so it each person will get just a random order of these if I have multiple tasks. And I, there's a little bit you can clear and delete steps and manage the specific chain right here. Um, but let's say that you have um, done an experiment and you want to collect the data. Um, so I use this time wall data and 
so I can go to through my uh, operating system and within my the time all folder there'll be a folder called data and now there's within there there's a subfolder for each participant and I ran it three times two four and five and um, depending on the test there'll be one or more files within here and I only did a couple trials each time so I could double click on this and open it up in um, a CSV file in in a in a spreadsheet and Microsoft Excel should open automatically on Windows if you have that installed but how do I combine all these together and this has been a problem for a lot of people in the past so I created a little utility to help you and so if we go to let's try to find it select the folder and you go to combine data this opens another tool that will recursively search for all the files within the directory you open it under that match a pattern and by default this pattern is star which matches everything and I can maybe I just want the CSV files so I can say CSV and now it'll and this looks like the files I want so let me look at here and now they each have this header so I'm gonna say files contain header and now I will combine and open and now notice I've got one uh, header with just the file names now I've got subject 2, subject 4, and subject 5 each trial and all the data for this and now I could bring that into using a pivot table find averages for subjects and conditions or bring it into SPSS or R and do more sophisticated analysis all right so that's the basic file data combiner tool and um, that's uh, a few other things uh, are available within the options there are um, a lot of links to websites here that can help you and you can open the manual through here this is how you quit and you can change the launcher size some of this I've covered in the installation how-to video so um, that's a basic walkthrough of how to run um, an experiment in Pebble and how to set up a, a an experiment chain and so thank you and please uh, if you have trouble contact the email list and if you use Pebble for your experiments please cite it here's how you can cite it thank you